Hi, I'm Jeff, the gunsmith at Wyoming Gun Company. The third step in our precision hunting rifle build will be fitting and chambering the barrel to the receiver. For this particular job, our customer has requested a carbon fiber wrapped proof research barrel, and we're gonna be using the receiver and the bolt that we previously accurized. Some other components that you might see on this table here is a range rod. With this tool, I will be able to center the barrel off the bore inside the lathe so that everything is concentric with the center line of the barrel. We have a oversized recoil lug that we're going to be using. And over here, we see our chambering reamer and headspace gauges and our cartridge. Again, this is going to be a 6.5 PRC. And then a couple measuring tools, depth micrometer and outside micrometer. To establish the dimensions required to fit the barrel to the receiver, we're gonna to have to take some measurements off the bolt and the receiver. The first measurement I'm gonna do will be from the receiver face to the bolt lug. This will establish the length of the thread tenon for the barrel. The second will be the receiver face to the bolt nose. This will give me the depth required for the bolt nose recess. The third measurement will be from the receiver face to the bolt face itself. And this will give us our headspace dimension. All right, so now I'm kind of just roughing in the back end of this in the spider in the lathe. Uh, again, <clears throat> we're centering off the bore line, so that's why I'm using my range rod here, which is perfectly sized to the bore. So we've got no, no play in that. And that way we can center off the insides rather than the outside. Just gives us a better, more concentric cut with the rest of the features of the barrel. My bore is held by the live center so that way I can get it real close. Okay, now that that's in, I can back my center out. And then move my range rod to the front. And so this range rod, just to explain, we've got a bushing here, and I've got a selection of them that's kind of incrementally sized, two tenths apart. And so you find the one that fits the best inside your bore, because not every barrel is exactly the same inside there. So I've got one that's snug, but not tight. And then the range rod itself is actually tapered. So that as I go in and proceed to push this in, the pilot is riding off the rifling, and then the tapered part will bottom out, basically bottom out, keeping that guy from moving. So I'm gonna go back and forth, um, center this one, and then go back, check the, check the front. And then the back, do one final centering, and we should be fine. Okay, now let's see what the back looks like. And these are both half thousands indicators. So each little delineation line there is one uh, half of a thousand. So we are within a thousandth on this one, but as always, I'm gonna get much, much closer. Basically zero run out again. Now that I've got my barrel centered up, I'm gonna take my rougher tool and clean off the face, make this perfectly flat. That will give me a nice surface to lay out my length, and then we'll go ahead and turn that length down. All right, now that I've got my length and diameter established, uh, we're gonna go in and thread for the receiver now. Okay, now our threads are cut. Let's go ahead and do a final test fit, make sure everything's good. Recoil lug on. Receiver. All right, there we go. Make sure we're light tight. No gap there whatsoever, everything's solid. Threading's completed. Now we're gonna move on to the bolt nose recess. Now that the threads are cut, we're gonna cut the bolt nose recess to the depth I've calculated.
Okay. Spray out the swarf. Okay, that should be good. Do a test fit. This, this feature I've just cut is the bolt nose recess. So literally this bolt nose will fit right in there, just like that. So what we're looking for here when the receiver's tight is for the bolt basically to close, drop free on its own, as if there was no barrel there at all. Okay, bolt in, and there we go. Got a little wiggle back and forth, a little clearance, perfect. So I've just completed the bolt nose recess. Everything's fitting just fine. Uh, the next step is gonna be cutting the chamber for the cartridge. Okay, so now that I've got my chambering reamer cut the chamber to depth, I'm gonna do one last check with the go and no-go gauges. What we're looking for here is for the bolt to close on the go gauge as if nothing were in the chamber. Get over the extractor, and there we go. That looks good. I don't have to push the bolt down, it just closes on its own. All right, and we'll extract that. Now we'll check with the no-go gauge. And this one is just a hair longer, so it should prevent the bolt from closing. And there we go. So after this is torqued on fully, this barrel, this receiver will be screwed on just a little bit more, and that should be a hard stop instead of where it's sitting now, but this is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so off camera, I went in and chamfered the sharp edges and polished the chamber. And now we're gonna take it out of the machine and prepare the barrel for torquing on the receiver. Uh, I've got the barrel in the vise. The receiver's screwed on lo loosely and we're ready to torque, do the final torquing and head space check. So let's get the wrench in there. All right. Okay, so now we'll do the very important last final headspace check, make sure everything's still safe. Just gotta back this screw out real quick. Okay. Check the bolt. Bolt closes. Got the go gauge. And we're looking for the bolt to actually close on this one. Drops free. Good there. No go gauge. And it does not close. We are within headspace on that. And I also like to check with a live round. We uh, just, so you know, there is no firing pin in assembly in this. So there's no chance of any Negligent discharges. And closed just fine there. Okay, the receiver is now mated to the barrel. We're within headspace, everything checks out. And next step's gonna be working on the muzzle end.